Hey, how's it going everyone? Zookeeper Chris here, back with another Planet Zoo tutorial. Today I am going to give you a fairly short and to the point guide on how to create underwater tunnels for your guests to use in your aquatic habitats. Let's dive right in. First off, I'm going to be completely honest with you all. These things are insanely buggy to do. Sometimes you might get this to work within five minutes. Other times you may be spending an hour trying to get it to work. This is definitely not something that Planet Zoo specifically built into the game for us to use, but hopefully with this guide, I can make things a little easier for you. The very first thing you're going to need is obviously a body of water. If you already have an aquatic habitat that you want to use for this, you can, but the most important part is to make sure that the bottom of that area is completely flat. So use your flattened terrain tool to do that. You just click and drag. For our example here, I'm just going to go ahead and use the terrain stamp tool with the sphere, and then I'm going to flatten out the bottom. Now, just planning ahead here, I think that the underwater feeder enrichment device needs to be six meters underwater. So I'm going to make the height of this one about 10 meters deep. And now that's done, I'm just going to go to flatten foundation, pick the lowest point and flatten out this body of water. And now all I want to do is go ahead and grab that underwater box feeder, place it down, add some water in just to make sure that it does work at this depth. And once you've placed it, pick it up, move it around a couple times just to make sure that the game is registering where it is. And it looks like it says this feeder is ready, so it looks like this one is deep enough. So here comes the fun part, digging out the underwater tunnel. So the next step is to choose your path. You can go ahead and pick any path that you want, as well as choose any width. Just to show that any width does work, I'll use the biggest one available. The next step here is the part that can be pretty difficult. You're basically going to be tunneling the path just below the water level in here so that the game automatically deletes the ground at the bottom of this lake. The way that I like to do this is select my path, make sure that tunneling is checked on, and then place my first tunneling piece two to three paces away from the water's edge. So this is one, two, I'll start back here at three. For these next steps, you'll want to use hotkeys U and J. U will raise the path up higher, and pressing J will bring the path down lower. Once I have my first piece down like this, I'll get the tunnel started by pressing the J key until the steps are as steep as they can go. Once I've got my first set of steps down, I'll go down here to make sure angle snap is turned on. I just find that it makes things a lot easier when I can get the path going perfectly straight through the water. And from this point, it's all about luck. As you can see here, I'm already obstructed by water volume, so I know what I'm going to have to do is take my starting point and take it further away from the water's edge. So let's do that. So I'll take it back a little bit and let's try this again. Turn my angle snap off, bring it down as far as I can, start the tunnel, turn angle snap on, and let's see if we can get close. So for here, I'm going to go down just two and I'm going to bring it up two spots. Now that you see the circle here, it means that this is level. You can even come down underneath the tunnel and see that it's starting to be leveled out. So what I want to do is I want to start placing it leveled and see if I can get it underneath the way that we need it to work. And as you can see, it has already started working for me. You can also see just how messed up it looks underwater with the curbs. So the fun part about this now is you can see that the guests can actually walk on the path and they'll be perfectly fine. They won't drown. Don't worry, they'll be all right. I mean, if guests can walk through the taiga biome in flip-flops and shorts, it makes complete sense that they can walk through water here and not drown. And then if you bring the camera up a little bit, you can see that the water does still exist right here. So all of your aquatic animals will be able to swim anywhere that the water is showing up on your screen. And then down here, obviously, they won't be able to swim this deep. Now that we have successfully gone underneath the water, what I want to do is redo this entrance over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these stairs. And now from down here, I'm going to try and make a spiral staircase. And I'll press J a few times now that I'm at the surface. Turn off my tunneling, I don't need it anymore. And as you can see, it uses up a little bit less space than taking the path all the way over here. So I usually like to do spiral staircases up out of the ground. And obviously for the other side, it would work the same exact way. I can just show you that right now. And if you're having this problem, like you're trying to tunnel out and it's still red, it just means that it's too close to the water. So you need to bring it down, tunnel a little bit further out, and then bring your tunnel up. 
So obviously this is not the cleanest of exits, but you can clean this up a bit and you can try different ways of exiting. The hardest part, honestly, is just getting this to work right here. Sometimes you can do this and you won't have these weird jagged edges. Sometimes it'll be terrain that's all messed up. It really just depends on the case. Honestly, with this, it's not too bad. This is really easy to hide with a couple rocks. So I'll go ahead and show you how that looks once it's hidden. And then from here, how you decorate it is entirely up to you. If you don't want to decorate it and you just want your guests walking literally inside the water with the animals, that's totally up to you. You can do that. But the most common thing that people use for their underwater tunnels is this thing right here. It's the classic Arbor Arch. Just go into construction and search that term and you'll find it. But just to show how something else looks, this right here is the glass modern roof, the two meter curved piece. And I think this also works just as well. The only thing for this that I would probably have to do is move the rocks in a little bit. And then there you go. This one looks pretty decent as well, in my opinion. And then just to show you, this does work. And again, you can place anything you want down here. You can have an animal talks down here. If you want to set one of those up, you can have benches down here. The guests will walk down here just to show you that this does work like that. I'll go ahead and show you now. As long as the path is set down, the guests can walk through with no problem. You can see in this one over here, I actually had some weird janky stuff happen with the terrain and there's no way to fix this. Another quick important thing to mention is once you've got this set up down here, you cannot remove the water and put it back in. So once you've got it set up, just leave it alone. Don't take the water out. If you take the water out, you are going to have to start this from scratch again or just hit control Z and undo it to put the water back in. That's the method I would recommend. As you can see, I'll take the water out and try and put it back in. It doesn't work because now the game is recognizing that there's a path there and it won't put water underneath the path. You have to have the water set down first and then put the path under the water and trick the game like that. And again, don't freak out if you can't get this your first try. If it takes you a couple minutes, just kind of keep tweaking it. I'm going to try and make a couple more here and see if I make them as quickly as I did my first try just now, or if I have some that kind of mess up, I'll speed up the time and just see how easy it is for me to do. An important thing to mention when you're placing down your first piece is if you place it down and it looks like that and it does not have any ground dug up underneath it, then you forgot to put tunneling on. So go ahead and pick that piece up and restart, select tunneling, place it down and as you can see it's that's what you want to see when you start because now it'll let me press j and start auto tunneling down below the ground and again when you're going down underground you are trying to level it off where you think the bottom of your water level is so i'm going to stop here i think this might be good continue down and let's have a look if that worked so if this were me in my own zoo, I would probably restart this and try and get the path a little bit higher and closer to the ground level here. And if you were like me and you wanted to raise this path up a little higher, all that means is you need to restart. And when you start this, bring it a little closer to the water's edge. Okay, still not working. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dig the lake itself a little bit deeper and try that out. Oh, yeah, that totally works. So if I wanted to go a little bit deeper, I could. Let's do it just for science. Okay, I made it worse. Well, as you can see, it does take a lot of finagling and playing around. Again, sometimes you'll get it on your first try. Sometimes you won't. But now again, I'm at the point where I probably just need to dig this out a little deeper. And when I do, what I just messed up in is try and make sure that you do, when you're digging this a little deeper, don't go too far back this way, because then you're going to kind of mess with the point that you need to start with over here. So once you have your tunnels set up from this point, you can just make a habitat like normal. You go up top, you build your barrier around, you put your animals in and it functions just like a normal habitat does. As you can see over here with my very basic setup, I just put this habitat in, put the glass panels around just like normal. And these penguins can go down, swim in the water right above all of these guests down below. I do want to mention one quick tip that has worked for some other people, and that is going to the terrain stamp tool down here, clicking sphere and making the sphere tunnel out an area just to the side of the water. And then from there, you just continue, like I mentioned earlier in the video. 
Simply Savannah, who has her own YouTube channel, I'll link it down in the description below, mentioned this tip to me and I did want to share that with you guys just in case you wanted to try something else out if none of this is working for you to just try that sphere tip out and see if it works for you. But again, don't get too stressed out if it is complicated and not working for you. It does not always work on the very first try. It is not always pretty on the very first try. Sometimes it takes time, but honestly, I think it is very worth the time. That's going to do it for today. I really hope this video helps you get the underwater viewing tunnels to work in your own zoos. If this video has helped you, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you're still having issues and want to chat with me live, Feel free to join us for one of our live streams over at twitch.tv slash zookeeperchris any Tuesday or Wednesday at 9 a.m. EST, where I'm always playing Planet Zoo and chatting about animals and my experiences as a real life zookeeper. In next week's video, I'll be doing a speed build on a very cool aquatic habitat idea that I haven't seen anyone else do yet, and I'll be implementing some of the things that I've shown in today's video. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and tune in for that. Until next time, stay wild.